One essential tool for a day trader is a reliable oscillator. And these are indicators, people use them to measure momentum and overbought, oversold conditions in the market. So one important feature is they can identify divergence in price. And divergence is just when the oscillator goes in one direction from the asset's price. And that signal can alert you to potential trend reversal. There's a variety of indicators that you can use. And one of those is the momentum oscillator. This helps you identify when a price trend is gaining or losing strength. That's gonna provide you with some pretty valuable signals for buying or selling. When you compare this data with other indicators like volume, you can identify potential trading opportunity. Some popular ones, the RSI, stochastics, moving average, convergence, divergence, up D. We've got volume based. And these are just tools that rely on volume. One of those that's very popular is the on balance volume indicator, OBV, compares buying and selling pressure using volume data. It just helps traders identify whether there's more buying or selling activity in a market over a period of time. Another one, it's a Chaikin oscillator, measures momentum based on changes in buying and selling pressure again, compares price and volume data to determine bullish and bearish trends. So when that oscillator crosses below zero, it's bearish, above it, bullish. We have volatility oscillators, and these measure how fast the price of an asset is changing. The RSI is a popular one, also measures whether a stock is overbought or oversold within a certain period of time. Could indicate that the stock is undervalued when it's oversold, could experience bullish. When it's overbought, could suggest that the stock is overvalued and could experience bearish momentum. Another one, the MACD. It's two exponential moving averages. One is slower than the other, generates a variety of signals. So when that faster average crosses above the slower one, it's a bullish signal. Faster crosses below the slower, bearish. Now choosing the right one for your strategy can be pretty tough. There's a lot of different ones out there, but you gotta understand what each one does and how it can benefit your specific trading approach. And that's four things to look at when you're looking at which ones to use. So using the RSI for day trading, again, it's a very popular one. Measures price momentum, helps you identify bullish trade signals or bearish momentum signals. Oscillates between two numbers, zero and 100. Readings above 70, generally, indicate overbought. Below 30 is oversold. You can change those. When the RSI crosses below, it's moving average. That's a sell signal, signaling downward pressure. Now, some back-tested strategy shows that when you combine the RSI with other oscillators, you can actually improve the accuracy because it helps to filter out other signals that are false. Always be mindful of market volatility though when you're relying on any single indicator. The Williams percent R came from Larry Williams, measures the level of the closing price relative to the high-low range over a certain period of time. So that indicator goes between zero and minus 100. Values above negative 20 indicate overbought. Values below negative 80, oversold. Around negative 50 is considered neutral. The stochastics oscillator measures the relationship between the closing prices and a range. Now, the most common version of this indicator is the 10-day slow oscillator. It uses two lines, percent K, percent D track the momentum of the asset. So when these two lines cross over each other, while well below the 20 level, indicates the asset's oversold. Could be looking at a reversal. If you see them cross above the 80 level, suggests that an asset's overbought. Could be ready for a pullback. Could be a buying opportunity when that pullback ends. Aggressive traders can also use it to enter trades based on divergence between price action and momentum. So if the asset's price is making lower lows, but the oscillator is making higher lows, that could signal that buyers are stepping in, current trends coming to an end. The MACD, two moving averages, identifies trends, momentum potential trade entry signals by the crosses. So that shorter term average crosses above the longer term one, could be an uptrend, cross below it, downtrend. The centerline crossover signals, they're gonna help traders confirm trend changes. Move above zero, bullish. Move below zero, bearish. You wanna also look for divergence between price action and the MACD. Bollinger bands, not an oscillator, but is useful. Three lines, upper band, middle band, Lower band changes based on the closing price of the stock. So the upper and lower ones, they form a channel, contains the majority of the stock's price. It's usually set around 20 periods moving average of the closing prices. And again, it's not technically an oscillator, but it does offer similar information. So one common strategy is selling when price touches or moves above the upper band. Buying when they touch or fall below the lower one. Now listen, this is just a brief overview. I think oscillators offer valuable information when you're looking to make trading decisions. I think it gives you a different insight into the market momentum can actually help you find potential turning points in price, depending on your strategy, of course. But listen, not all oscillators are created equal. You gotta carefully consider the optimal time frame for the oscillator you're using. It's the bottom line. Talking about indicators here. Listen, a lot of indicators are overused. A lot of indicators aren't even used properly. Here's a price pattern trading guide. It's totally free. You can use this in conjunction 
with an indicator if you like or on its own. It's up to you. It's only free download. Link is over here on the left or down below. Thanks for watching.